From resume writing to interviewing, job seekers have to make several good impressions before getting hired. But the first gatekeeper on the path to human resources often isn't even human. It's a computer. If your resume has the right key words in it, it'll go to the top of the pile. If it doesn't, no human being ever sees it. And that's a real tragedy. Professional resume writer and career coach Debbie Shalom explains there's an easy way to find the right words to use to get noticed by the applicant tracking software. Look at words that keep repeating themselves throughout the uh, job uh, posting. That's a short, simple way to identify them. Another way is look at, think about industry buzzwords. Which words keep coming up in your industry? Using the right key words can help put your resume in the hands of the second gatekeeper, human resources. Your resume should be written in a way to answer the needs of the hiring manager, but in a way an HR manager can understand, so you'll want to avoid acronyms. The HR person most probably does not know what those acronyms stand for. So I always tell people, first of all, don't overload your resume with acronyms. And if you do, put in parentheses, what do they stand for? And the third gatekeeper your resume needs to impress is the person who could end up being your future boss. Make sure that when you write your resume that you recall, you remember it's about the employer's needs. So even though the resume is yours and it's about you, but it's how you are going to satisfy what they need. As you lay out what to put in your resume, Shalom recommends starting at the top with letting potential employers know what skills make you the right person for the job. You have a good blend of what we call soft skills and hard skills. Soft skills are um, attributes, they can be personality attributes, they can be um, things like, can you problem solve, conflict resolution, um, customer service, that's a big one today. So you want to make sure that the top third piece of your resume, which we call either the profile or the qualification summary, you're looking at things like strong interpersonal time management and organizational abilities. The next section gives you a chance to list your professional experience and write about the achievements throughout your career. You want to say, how did you do it? And if possible, what was the result? So I always tell people, think of it as, what is the problem? What actions did you take? And what are the quantifiable results? That's what you need to put on a resume because that's what tells the story. And make it bold. If you imagine that an HR manager or a recruiter has, you know, only a few seconds and they're scanning, just think about it, your eye scanning down, what's going to stop your eye? Something that's bolded. So that's exactly what you want them to do. You want them to stop and read what it is. Now, it's not that I just fold any old thing. Uh, if you see in the resume example that I've given you, I've folded the big pieces of what they did for the company. For instance, they negotiated competitive prices from vendors. So that's a thing that, uh, uh, an item and achievement that most employers would like to know. And there's something you should know about how you create your resume to prevent it from getting lost in the shuffle. A lot of people that I see use commercial templates and unfortunately commercial templates a lot of times have text boxes and columns built into them. They don't go through the applicant tracking system software. And if you want to call back, don't put your contact info in the header of your document. One time I had a client who used a header, which you also shouldn't use the headers and the footers, and they put their contact information in the header. They never got a response and they couldn't understand why. They came to me. The first thing I did, of course, was look how it was formatted. And I said, because they don't know how to contact you, your information is in the header. And before you apply for that job and hit send, test out how your resume appears on different operating systems, both Windows and iOS, or export it as a PDF just to be safe. Mark Roper, WMAR2 News.